Hello everyone, my name is Hemingway Jones. Welcome to the channel. This is our little corner of the internet where we speak about fountain pens, inks, journals and journaling, and pretty much everything that has to do with self-expression. Thank you for joining me today. I'm coming to you from my library. Where else? Where I'd like to talk to you today about some of those paths we find ourselves going down in the pursuit of the perfect thing. In this case, a flex nib. It's a journey I've been on for many years, many twists and turns, and now I have to ask myself, have I found it? Have I found the perfect flex nib? Let's get into it. So I think to be involved in this hobby, we're all on some level Platonists, where we have this perfect idea out there that we know there's the perfect pen, the perfect medium nib, the perfect ink, the perfect piece of paper, and everything we've found so far is just a reflection of it. And we're on this romantic, idealized search for that perfect experience. How many times have we gone down a path looking for something and sometimes we find other things. At the end of that path we hope is some kind of enlightenment, some kind of transcendental moment where we're like, I just realized this is the perfect blue and now my life and everything is so much better. But does it really work out that way? So for me, one of those paths, and I've been on many, but the one I'd like to share with you today is about the flex nib. And my journey for the perfect flex nib began in an unlikely place. And I don't think it's a place any of you could guess, but I'll just tell you. It's at the observation bar of the Queen Mary in Long Beach, California. So I attended an event on the Queen Mary in Long Beach, California, where essentially we pretended that it was 1939 for the entire weekend. So everyone there was dressed appropriately. We did dances and played music from that era and of course socialized. So I was out on the observation deck with a group of really close friends where one of them pulled out his collection of vintage fountain pens. Now, I had been a pen collector myself already for many years, but I never bought vintage pens. I was very much at the time into Waterman pens, and I had my Schaefer Legacy, and I think I had my Cartier Diablo by then, pens like that. But he had this fantastic collection of vintage Waterman pens, vintage Schaefer's, but it was his Waterman 52 that really impressed me. The nib on it felt more like a paintbrush. And it took me many years before I really went in search of that because I had bought a few vintage pens, another rabbit hole, and it didn't work out that great for me. I found they broke quickly or the bladders broke inside or the nibs weren't quite what I thought or there was just other problems with them. But what that moment did do was plant this idea of a certain type of flexible writing where I could get thin to fat lines, not damage a nib, and just have really expressive and interesting writing. Now, I should also mention that 
I don't know how to do calligraphy or Spencerian writing, and my handwriting's okay. You guys have seen it. It's serviceable, but it's certainly not that gorgeous, flexible writing style handwriting. So you need a little bit of technique to even get the full effect out of these nibs. Nevertheless, I enjoyed writing with them and I wanted to give it a try. So I started to go down the list of all the different flexible nib pens just to try to get a semblance of that experience. So it started out with one that was a big disappointment. So what was this pen that was such a disappointment? It was none other than the Pilot Falcon with its 14 karat gold nib. So on paper, everything looked great. I bought the extra fine version, hoping that it would go from extra fine up to double broad and get a lot of line variation out of it. And I will say it does accomplish that, but it's just not a very enjoyable experience. And maybe it's the fact that the nib is in extra fine, but I find that it's very scratchy and it doesn't glide. So in a sense, two different strands of competing missions were hitting head on. I love smooth pens and I was trying for flexible line variation writing. So it's not easy to get smoothness out of an extra fine nib as we all know. And these two competing streams just ran into each other and it just wasn't very pleasant for me. I still have the pen. I use it on occasion, but mostly just for content on TikTok. So the experience was so bad with the Pilot Falcon that it really discouraged me from pursuing this quest further. But then, like after a bad breakup, time heals all wounds. And I decided to try once again with a pen that I think is vastly underrated. You just don't hear enough about it. And that is the Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya. I believe it goes for around $30, $35, and you get a lot of pen for that money. For one thing, it's beautiful. It holds a decent amount of ink, and it has a really nice flex nib. It's basically split right down the middle and the feed does a pretty good job of keeping up with the flexing, but it certainly helps to use an ink like Kanpeki that flows very well to try to keep up with that flexing. There's certainly far fewer false starts than with the Pilot Falcon. So I was extremely impressed that the Pilot Falcon, which costs $200, is an inferior pen, in my opinion, to the Fountain Pen Revolution that cost around $30, $35. So it made me feel a little better that I found something that works. I still had no technique, but it was a much more enjoyable pen for journaling and for trying to do some line variation. Now, one of the things that was also better, I think in comparison with the Falcon, is that it was a much smoother writing pen. So you could do a little bit more of straight up journaling without flexing and having it become much closer to an everyday pen. So right about the time when I bought the Fountain Pen Revolution, I got more curious about flex nibs and I started to buy ones that we'll call them flex nibs, but they're really soft writers. And you know those nibs, the ones that almost collapse as you use them. And it's certainly a light feeling. It's almost like you're writing with a brush. I quite like it. I'll give you a few examples. The Pinator Full Metal Jacket in Army Red that I recently reviewed. That has a nib the quill nib that's very much like that. It doesn't do a lot of line variation, but it certainly is a beautiful, smooth, soft, and very enjoyable writing experience. The ultimate, in my opinion of that, is the Mont Blanc Egyptomania. It has a rather short gold nib that seems to fold as you use it. It's more than springy, it's full flex but it doesn't give you hardly any line variation and I don't really push it to even try, but it's just not that kind of experience. So it's sort of flex for softness sakes. Another one like that would be the Mont Blanc 
264, a vintage pen that I quite like. I have a medium flex nib on it. Line variation is just okay, but the writing experience is outstanding. So these kind of soft nib pens are technically flex pens, and I've explored that as sort of a subcategory of going down this road. But I was mostly satisfied with them as everyday writers, especially the Egyptomania and the Pinator. I use those quite frequently. The 264 I break out on occasion. I actually have just recently refilled it, so I'll be doing a little bit of content on that soon. So all of this leads to the climax of our story. Have I found the ultimate flex nib pen? Could it possibly be that Jin Hao with the zebra steel dip pen nib that's shoved in there? No, it's not that pen. Although I'd really like to try one of those. I'm, I'd love to get my hands on it. I haven't seen them around in a few months, but I'm sure they're still out there. No, what I'm talking about is a pen I found by chance. I've used it quite a bit and I've been very impressed with it. And of course, I'm speaking about none other than the Blue Dew Flex Nib Pen. This pen is rather remarkable. You can call it perhaps expensive, it's $88, but it's half and actually less than half the price of the Pilot Falcon, which it is vastly superior than. It's certainly more expensive than the Fountain Pen Revolution, but it's better than that pen as well. So it has a steel flexible nib that flexes very, very well. It's quite smooth. It's comfortable enough for everyday writing. I have read that some people have sprung the tines on their nibs, so you don't want to over flex it. And certainly if you're a flexing maniac and you're putting down those double broad lines for extended periods, it's not going to keep up. But if you use it, sparingly and have that effect, it is quite an enjoyable writing pen. And I've been using it off and on now for about eight or nine months. So I have to say out of all the modern flex nibs that I have written with, the Blue Dew flex nib is the best all around. Out of any flex nib I've ever written with, it's still that Waterman 52 and a half that I have. It's a wonderful pen. It's like using a brush. It has wonderful line variation. It just doesn't hold very much ink. It only lasts for about a page and a half. And I think one day I will find the perfect Waterman 52 vintage pen that might be the ultimate flex nib. But until then, maybe I'm looking ahead to the Mont Blanc calligraphy nib. We'll see. So what do you think about flexible nibs? Is this a rabbit hole that you've fallen down? Did your path lead anywhere? Did you come to a different conclusion? Have you found the ultimate flex nib that is right under my nose and I've been missing it all the time? Is it the Noodler's pen? Some other? Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching this video. I appreciate it. If you could do me a big favor and please our algorithm overlords, I would appreciate it. Please hit that like button, leave me a comment with your thoughts, and please subscribe and share this video with someone else who you think would enjoy this content. We are really starting to take off and gain some momentum and we're bringing some new and interesting people into our group. So this is fantastic fun. I appreciate you all spending part of your week with me and know that I will see you next week further up the road. Take care.